So, hi. Um, I've been talking about this for a little bit, and so I thought I'd better get on and do it, really. Um, and that is to redo the copper nanoparticles video. And there's a couple of reasons for doing this. The copper nanoparticles weren't particularly good, the video wasn't particularly good, and um, this is an improved method. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need um, three things. The first thing is your copper salt. Now, I'm going to use copper acetate. Um, it's a copper 2 salt. You can use copper sulfate or copper nitrate. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the next thing I'm going to use is ascorbic acid. Now, I buy this from uh, a food supplier, so it's pretty pure stuff. Uh, you buy it in kilogram sacks. That's lasted me for about a year. And um, it's really easy to get hold of and use, and, and obviously very safe. Now, <laughs> the next thing you need is this stuff, which is PVP. PVP is a... Um, really safe polymer. They use it in toothpaste to make toothpaste thicker. Uh, ice cream as well. They use it in ice cream to make, thing, make the stuff thicker. So they make tons of this stuff. So again, it's actually quite cheap to get hold of and quite easy to get hold of because it's a safe chemical. So all of these chemicals are um, safe. Obviously, you don't want to go eating the copper salts, but the reduction agents are um, safe and um, easy to get hold of. And um, that's why we're using them. Now, Previously what I did was really just heat some water, chuck in some ascorbic acid and some copper salt and output of the copper nanoparticles. And although they were um, stable copper particles for a while, about two or three days, maybe a week at best if we didn't uncover them, they did oxidise slowly and they did sink out. Now what PVP does is it's a long chain molecule and it'll wrap itself around the copper. And as it wraps itself around the copper, it actually protects the copper. Uh, prevents the copper particles from growing too big, so that it controls the size of them, and allows you to get them back out of um, solution by centrifuging them. If you do that, and um, incidentally this particular method uh, generates copper nanoparticles around about 4 nanometers or so, if you do that, it's actually relatively simple to make yourself uh, an inkjet copper ink. Because 4 nanom um, nanometers is so small, it'll go through the inkjet nozzle. Your, your limit on the inkjet nozzle is about 0 0.4 0.45 micrometers, yeah, 450 nanometers, something like that. So it's really well small enough to go through the nozzle. Now, when you print with it, you won't print a conductive line, because remember, each of those copper nanoparticles is surrounded by a PVP molecule. So what you need to do is get rid of that PVP molecule. And this particular uh, molecule is really susceptible to um, flash centering. So the idea would be to um, make the nanoparticles, turn them into an ink, um, print with them and then get an ordinary camera flash and flash them a couple of times and that will center the nanoparticles into a conductive strip. So that's where we're going with this. Um, something just occurred to me just then, I've forgotten what it was. Ah, yes, the ink. If you make the ink, what you need to do is add water and then well, the volume that you've got, you add 1% um, by volume uh, polyethylene glycol and 1% by volume isopropanol alcohol and that will give you the right consistency for your ink. Uh, your weight loading of copper nanoparticles, I don't really know, so I would just try a few and see what happens. That would be obviously the best answer. Um, so let's get on with this then. And the first thing you need to do is to dissolve your PVP into some water. Now, we're going to do this reaction with the water hot because it helps speed everything up. And you take 100 millilitres of hot water, Put it on your stirrer, get it going, oh, plug it in first, okay, and you add to it your PVP. Now the amount of PVP I'm using here is a 0.8 molar amount. Now it's not 8 molar by the weight of PVP because the weight of PVP changes, obviously it's uh, a polymer uh, and it can go up to uh, hundreds of thousands of grams per mole. It's the weight of the um, monomer, so the vinyl pyrrolidone, uh, which is 110 grams per mole. So you use that to work out uh, what molarity you need, in this case it's a point 8 molar solution. Now the reason I'm giving you um, molar solutions, molarities, is because you may want to make more of this, okay? Now, uh, once you've got that thoroughly mixed up, what you do is divide it into two solutions of 50 millilitres uh, each. 
and that looks good. Yeah, there we go. So just divide that up into two. Pop that back on the stirrer, and this time add your ascorbic acid. Now your ascorbic acid is a 0.4 molar solution. So in this particular one, we're going to add three and a half grams each of uh, ascorbic acid to that. Oil. Okay, so our PVP is what's called the capping agent. And um, the ascorbic acid is the reducing agent. And to that, we need to add our copper. Now, if we add too much copper, what's going to happen is that the particle growth will carry away with itself and you get big old lumps. So you need to add, actually, surprisingly little. And it is, in fact, a 0.01 bonus solution of um, the copper salt that you need to add to this uh, to keep it down to 4 nanometers. If you add more copper, it will reduce but the particle size it will be bigger, so you're not going to be able to use it as an ink. So if you keep to those uh, ratios, so it's a 0.8 molar solution of ascorbic acid uh, of uh, PVP, and add a 0.4 molar solution of ascorbic acid to it, which is what we've got here, got 0.8 molar solution of PVP, to which we're going to add a 0.01 molar solution of um, copper acetate to it. Uh, in my case, a 0.01 molar is um, 0.019 grams. Now I can't get that, so what I would do would be weigh out 2 grams and chuck it into a litre, and that's going to give you the right molarity. Um, again, it's a demonstration, so I'm not actually too worried about the particle size. So I've got a little bit of copper acetate, acetate and I'm going to just dump a little bit in there. There we go, that's plenty and swirl it around a bit until it dissolves. And as you can see, it's going this nice bluey green colour. Now once that has dissolved, we leave this stirring and we add our copper acetate to... Put it on there. Uh, add our copper acetate solution to our um, stirring solution. Now, that bright orange-yellow colour that it's gone almost immediately is a, a reduced copper salt. It's actually a Cu2O. And over time, that bright orange will turn to red. So there you go, we've got our copper reduction happen almost immediately. Now you leave this stirring for three hours. And after three hours, it should have gone through yellow, orange, bright red. And so we'll get back when it's had three hours of stirring. Okay, so after about three hours of stirring, and it's gone this nice bright sort of salmon pink colour, then it's done. And what you've got in there are a load of copper nanoparticles covered in PVP to stabilise them and uh, you can get them out by centrifuging it and then you can use that to make a copper ink. Now I've included the scientific papers that this all came from and the reaction details are all in the description. So if you want to look at the references and the backup, just read the description, it's all in there. Okay? Now the other thing that I wanted to do was um, something called the polyol process. Now the polyol process uh, doesn't use water, it uses um, polyols, and polyols are things like this. Uh, this is diethylene glycol, there's also monoethylene glycol, uh, polyethylene glycol, a whole range of them. And the glycols, when you use them as um, solvents of this, it's called the polyol process. Now the reason for using these, is these are polar incidentally, um, is that the um, 
boiling point is much higher than water. It's actually uh, 245 degrees for this. So you can get the reaction much hotter for a start. Um, the other thing is they do have a reducing effect in themselves. So they will contribute to the reduction of metal nanoparticles uh, all by themselves. Um, they act as a dispersant and they act as a capping agent. So they do quite a lot of things. Now, um, we're going to do the polyol process in, um, with three solutions. The first solution is um, our PVP. So we're going to use the PVP as a, a collating capping agent again. And uh, it's going to assist the polyol, the diethylene glycol that we're going to use here to um, help the reaction stabilise and give you a better reaction and a um, solution of nanoparticles that will stay in solution. And they're very stable for about two months, maybe more, so that they do make very stable solutions. And um, they're able to reduce things that water solution isn't able to reduce. So if you use the water ascorbic acid method, then you can make uh, copper nanoparticles, gold, silver, platinum, those kind of nanoparticles. But things like um, nickel and iron actually can't be made in ascorbic acid and water. It's just not strong enough. But you can do it using a polyol method. So although I'm doing copper nanoparticles using a polyol synthesis here, um, I'll be using again later when I want to make nickel nanoparticles. So I thought I'd do the polyol process now using copper as part of the copper thing. And then later when I'm actually making um, electrodes for the batteries, I'll use the polyol process to make uh, nickel nan nan nanoparticles, which I'll then be able to paint down to um, my battery bits and pieces and use them as current collectors for um, batteries and supercapacitors. Because you need something like that when you're using the potassium hydroxide electrolyte because that will eat away just about anything else. But lots of people want copper, and so that's why I'm actually concentrating on copper. Now, the ratio of uh, PVP to ascorbic acid to copper in a polyol process like this is 5 to 2.5 to 1. So it's 5 moles of uh, PVP, 2.5 moles of ascorbic acid, and 1 mole of uh, your copper 2 salt. Again, I'll be using copper acetate. Now, I've weighed out... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, it's two grams, two grams of PVP in there, and I'm going to add um, 100 milliliters of diethylene glycol. Now, once I've added the 100 milliliters of diethylene glycol, what I'm going to do is take it off to the sonicator. Uh, I'll put hot water in the sonicator, so it's going to be about um, 80 degrees, something like that, and sonicate it until the PVP has um, been dispersed throughout the diethylene glycol and the temperature has been raised. Now sonication actually raises the temperature, so the temperature will go up to about 90 degrees. Now this reaction is very quick, so when I've done this with everything, all my solutions are going to be at 90 degrees and that's where I want them. So the first thing to do is to add my 100 milliliters of diethylene glycol. And then I'm going to take that off and sonicate it. And I'm going to sonicate it with um, my ascorbic acid, which is uh, 35 millilitres of diethylene glycol and half a gram of ascorbic acid. And then it's 20 millilitres of diethylene glycol and a tenth of a gram of the copper salt. So those are the three things I'm going to be sonicating, so I'll go off and sonicate them now so that it's, uh, the PVP dissolves and the temperature goes up to about 90 degrees. Okay, so here we have our 100 millilitres of diethylene glycol, and it's at about um, 80 degrees now, actually. And uh, it's got the PVP dissolved in there, two grams of it, which is a five molar uh, ratio. Now, when I say five molar ratio, I don't mean five moles, uh, molar to the uh, PVP molecule, which is huge, it, it varies between sort of 40,000 grams per mole and um, oh, hundreds of thousands of grams per mole. I mean, uh, the PVP monomer, which is only 110, 111 grams per mole. So that's what you're doing. You're doing the uh, 5 to 2.5 to 1 ratio based on the PVP monomer, not the PVP molecule. Okay, so there's my PVP in diethylene glycol here. Here's my ascorbic acid in diethylene glycol, and that's a ratio of 2.5. And that's half a gram in there, incidentally. And here's my um, copper acetate in uh, diethylene. And that's 20 millilitres, 35 millilitres, 100 millilitres, uh, 2 grams of PVP, half a gram of um, 
ascorbic acid and 0.1 gram of um, copper acetate. Now, this reaction will actually work anywhere between sort of 60 and 200 degrees, so it's cooling down now even as we speak, but it doesn't really matter. It'll happen between those. What, what will vary is the speed of the reaction and uh, the particle size. The um, quicker the reaction happens, obviously, the smaller the particle size is going to be. This is going to happen quite slowly now because it's all got quite cool, so the particles will be quite large and it'll take a little bit longer to happen. If you do it at 170 to 200, the reaction is actually almost instantaneous. Now, I did mention, uh, mean to mention that the diethylene glycol I got here is, in fact, uh, bought from a chemist, but polyethylene glycol is um, dot 4 brake fluid. So if you get some um, brake fluid, clutch fluid at dot 4, that is in fact polyethylene glycol. Now the order that you add these things also matters. So um, you turn that on to stir it and the first thing you add is the acetic acid and then after that you add the copper acetate. So that's the um, order that you do this in. And that's what we're going to do. And just give that a minute to mix up. You can see it turning yellow already as that reaction happens. Now, as I say, because this reaction got quite cool, we're going to have to leave that stirring now for about 50 minutes or so, and again, that will go the nice red colour that we saw earlier. Now, copper oxide is a kind of very deep brick red, so you'll know you're getting copper oxide. It's the salmon pink red that you're looking for. So I'll leave that stirring for 50 minutes and then show you the results. And there you go, that's the end of the polyol reaction and as you can see it's this beautiful pinkish red colour and what you've got there is a whole host of copper nanoparticles um, capped in PVP. Now the ascorbic acid in there is scavenging any oxygen and um, keeping those as copper and the PVP is surrounding them and keeping them in suspension and that will be stable for months. And what you can do with that is uh, centrifuge it collect the copper nanoparticles, wash them in ethanol, and then use them as an ink, you would reduce that by a flashlight.